underway and racing now. And California to the right of your picture, Thames Rowing Club to the left. Men's fours. Fabulous view down the course, is straight mile and a bit. So Matthew Pinsent in the umpire's launch behind. And they need to keep an eye on the California boat, which is just veering out into the middle a little bit. They'll correct that. They are correcting that. There wasn't much in between the, the times of these two crews yesterday to the uh, first two markers, exactly the time to the first marker barrier and Foley. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happened in those races yesterday, you know, how they've recovered from that, the kind of race plan they've got for today, and who's really going to kind of try and stamp their authority in this race early on. Well, history would suggest the Americans are in with a shout because the last three years the visitors has been won by USA Boat, harbored twice in that sequence. And looking at it early on, you've got the California boat nearest to the picture there, taking the lead against Thames Rowing Club in the background. But it's pretty tight, isn't it? Yeah, and this is kind of what we expected from this race, that there, were, there hasn't been much in between the two boats through the regatta. Uh, the Californian crew obviously, you know, progressing as the week goes on, you know, because they have to fly from the States, adapting to the time change. And obviously Thames, you know, have kind of been doing extremely well in the kind of domestic circuit and it's their chance now to kind of step up into a big event like an intermediate event and take on this uh, crew from the University of California. They'll okay, get lots of home support as they go in front of the boathouses, Thames Rowing Club. Mention Puzzinelli in uh, the three seat for Thames Rowing Club, he's in charge of steering. Is that uh, unusual? Yeah, normally in a, in a, in a Cotsus boat like this you already have your stroke person steering but maybe the stroke person isn't confident enough um, so it's whoever wants to have the foot because you don't want to add pressure to someone that's racing who might not be comfortable doing something. So the steering foot is always best for someone who's confident, doesn't think it's going to affect their kind of racing or the kind of pattern of movement. So it's wherever it chooses to be in the boat, whoever's more comfortable with it. Thames Rowing Club with three winners from last year's Thames winning boat. And it's made up of an Irishman, a New Zealander, a Brit and a South African. So it's a pretty cosmopolitan lineup for a so, British boat. Sounds like a pretty good mix. <laughs> it's the start of a bad joke. <laughs> Hinson and Redgrave spring to mind with their steering setups from the two seat for a while and then uh, Hinson taking over. Yes, yeah, St Steve always wanted to have the foot. He wanted to be in charge of the foot. He just, he just didn't trust Matt, I think. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's always, you know, it's easier being in the stroke seat, the person stroking the boat, looking back at the course, because then you can see your line. But if you're sitting beside, behind someone, they impede your view of where the kind of boat is and the angle it is. So, you know, it's, it's a lot more challenging steering from three than it is a stroke. Yeah, USA boat, University of California boat beat Oxford Brooks and uh, a Dutch contribution as well. Two and a half lengths yesterday in their semi-final. Thames Rowing Club are against an all Dutch four, a length and a quarter. So they were both involved in reasonably competitive races yesterday in their semi finals. The Californian crew this looks in a really nice rhythm now, really kind of chained along, just looking back at the kind of Thames crew, they're in a great rhythm now. University of California, one of the real powerhouses as an area of the world. I know you know a lot about, Mark, uh, rowing over there. Yeah, I went out there for a year. I was coaching at UCLA, so not Berkeley, unfortunately. You know, another great powerhouse at UCLA. And, you know, this crew or this group of athletes have been part of the Cal team that won the IRAs in America this year, which is the top university event. And they took out the University of Washington and won it for the last six seasons. So, you know, it's a, a really great group of guys they've got there, which Mike Tate is in charge of. And Scott Fradson is working with these guys over in Henley. Yeah, classy boat and classy performance so far. There they are. University of California, USA. It's Wallace in the bow seat. He's always smiling, Wallace. Look how much he's enjoying his day out in the bow seat. It's always interesting the different, different facial expressions athletes have. I think that's the happiest facial expression I've seen all week from an athlete on the water. I've seen a few happier in the evenings. Maybe, he's, town a, maybe he's got extremely white teeth and it looks like he's just smiling. Well, he's, uh, if he grimaces like that, he's a lucky man. Van Sprang 
Herkmans and Sutton it is in the stroke seat for the University of California. But this is when they've got to stay composed. You know, you can see the boat rolling around a little bit there. You know, you've got the kind of wash from the kind of launches going down the side of the course. You've got to stay on their boat, making sure that they stay in control. You can see it just moving around a bit too much there. And every time it moves like that, it checks the boat speed. So they want to keep it as stable as possible. Wallace in the bow seat also steers. He's also communicating as well. He was the man that you saw shouting there to the rest of his crew. Because Thames Rowing Club are giving it a go, aren't they? They are probably going to run out of water, but they've uh, stayed in contention. They've made it competitive. They've ensured that the University of California have fought all the way. They've uh, struck up a decent lead, the Americans. I think the Thames crew, though, are starting to get a sniff of the boat next to them. Yeah. They're starting to move up in the gears now. And the Carroll crew has to be careful with their steering. They must get back on their station. You can see Matt Pinson. He's got the flag warning them to get across. The umpire, Sir Matthew Pinson, there in the sunglasses at the front of that launch. Keeping a very close eye on the Americans. And they're just getting a little bit ragged, aren't they, the Americans? Yeah, they've just lost their composure a little bit. The blade work is kind of getting a bit erratic now. They just need to stand in the rhythm. You can see Thames now starting to build, and this is a really kind of good move here. They've stayed in their boat doing their thing, trying to put the Californian ground of pressure in the steward's enclosure. Leicester has a look over his shoulder. The bowman in the Thames rowing club boat, top of your picture. They have reacted, though, the Americans. They've still got a length lead. They'll be pleased when they get to the finish line because they've been given a fright there. But they've done enough in front of the stewards. Here come the Americans. Just a boom on the left. They need to be careful of this. Could be really dramatic. And they've gone. The Americans, with a couple of strokes oh remaining in the final, have hit the booms and they are absolutely shattered. They've done the course so successfully and had a length or so lead. And just as you thought they had the race in the bag, bang, into the booms they go, and they are distraught. Goodness me, you don't do that on finals day at Henley Raw Regatta. In the visitors, what a result for Thames Rowing Club. They hung in there, they made the Americans, they forced that error. They cracked, they, they cracked, and you just saw the blade work. I mentioned it earlier on the course, about four minutes to go. They lost the composure, they weren't moving well and they start to be more erratic with their blade work, and then the boat's not going the straight line onto the booms, and once you hit them, there is no escape. Game over. Astonishing finish. We said, didn't we, just a couple of hundred metres before that happened, the blade work, I think I use the expression, getting ragged. And they just got more and more tired. I mean, completely understandable, because they put in a big shift, they got to that point in the race. And you've got to give Thames some credit there. Everybody will be looking at the American boat and uh, thinking they made an error, but Thames made them work, didn't they? They pushed them all the way and created that opportunity. I said forced the error, basically. Well, Thames just did their thing. They didn't get flustered by what was going on beside them, kept in their bubble, their race plan. And then the California crew were just looking over too much. They were too worried about what was going on rather than sticking in their boat doing their thing. And you can't do that, Henley. And it, that, you know, especially when you've got that advantage, you're in front. You just stay away from the boom, just don't get close to them. And once you're on top of them, as I said, there is no escape. It's game over. Well, the but that's... Irishman, the New Zealander, the Britain of South Africa in the Thames boat, I don't think they could believe their luck. That was sensational.